So in today's video, I'm sharing seven surprising signs of codependency you might be overlooking. So if you're wondering if you're codependent or not, this video is for you. But first, if you're new, my name is Michelle Ferris. I'm a psychotherapist and I love helping people create relationships that work. So let's start with what is codependency? Codependency is basically a relationship pattern where you hyper focus on other people because you're so focused on being in relationship and helping, controlling, or rescuing others that you tend to lose yourself in the process. So first we're going to talk about some common signs of codependency in relationships. The first one is putting other people's needs ahead of your own. This is key for a codependent person because they're totally hyper-focusing on how to get love and support and how they do that is to focus on other people first. The second core symptom is difficulty setting boundaries or saying no, mostly because they'd rather please you than please themselves. Another core symptom of codependency is being a people pleaser. You may overextend yourself by saying yes, by doing favors almost compulsively because that's how you get your worth. And the last core sign of codependency is developing an unhealthy dependency on others. When you get into relationship, you tend to lose yourself and I don't want that for you. So now let's talk about the subtle signs, the surprising signs that you may not be aware of of codependency. And the first one is an oversensitivity to any perceived criticism. This one is key because most people who struggle with codependency are sensitive and tend to get their feelings hurt easily. So when people are giving constructive feedback, you get hurt easily. You might even find yourself reacting, getting defensive. So a common example in my life is one of my siblings sometimes tells me, you know, Michelle, you're not good with details. And this is not new news to me, but every time they say it, I feel hurt. It kind of takes me back. That's because people who are codependent like me tend to take things personally because we're really focused on what other people think of us rather than being able to esteem and validate ourselves, which is part of the recovery process. So even when the feedback is well-meaning, you might find yourself feeling extra sensitive to it. If you've ever had this issue, say me too in the comments, I'm right there with you. So the next surprising sign of codependency is difficulty making decisions. And this is also because when we're codependent, we're focused so much on what other people think, we don't think about what we want and what we need. So you're constantly asking other people what they think you should do, even if it's what to wear, what to eat, what you should do for work, because the heart of codependency is a lack of self-trust meaning that we don't trust ourselves, which is why it's so hard to make decisions. And we look outside of ourselves for that validation, for that stamp of approval that says you're making the right decision versus us being able to do that for ourselves. So another reason why you may find it difficult to make decisions is that you don't wanna make a mistake and that governs a lot of your thinking. So you might have perfectionistic tendencies you don't realize that you don't have to get it right every single time. But that's part of codependency is putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to be perfect and to do things the right way. So the next surprising sign of codependency is a fear of being alone. And this ends up keeping you stuck in unhealthy relationships because you don't want to be alone. Even things like me time, time for self care feels really uncomfortable. I know for me, when I was in my early twenties in recovery, I did not want to be alone. I was making compulsive phone calls one after the other. I was running around my house because I couldn't sit still. And that's because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. If you relate to this, say me too in the comments. Plus, because we're so focused on other people, we don't really know how to enjoy our own company. So that's a really intricate part of recovery as well. So the next surprising sign of codependency in relationships is that we avoid conflict. And that goes back to childhood where most likely we did not get good role modeling when it comes to communication, expressing feelings honestly, and being able to resolve conflict. 
So what the codependent person learns is that in order to stay safe, they have to avoid any semblance of conflict. That leads to the next sign, which is they stuff their emotions, especially if it's anger, expressing disappointment, feeling resentful. When you're codependent, you're really good at pretending that everything is okay. The problem with that is that those feelings don't go away. They get stored in the body as stress. So the more we try to shove those feelings down, the more stressed and anxious we become. The other reason we avoid conflict is that we don't wanna risk somebody getting upset at us. That is our worst fear in codependency, is that we wanna be liked because our self-esteem depends on it. So we go to great lengths to avoid admitting that we're hurt, admitting that something isn't okay with us. And this leads into the next surprising sign of codependency is often when people are codependent, they struggle with anxiety. Now, I'm not saying that every single person with anxiety is codependent, that's not what I'm saying. But when anxiety is coupled with a tendency to over-function in the world and in your relationships, then that's most likely a sign of codependency. So part of what happens when we're over-functioning is that we're kind of like the Tasmanian devil. Run, 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 right? We're constantly doing, helping, visiting, rescuing, doing things around the house, not sitting still, not relaxing. And all of those things contribute to feeling anxious. And it took me a while to realize that I had to be willing to slow that down in order to feel better. Because over-functioning does lead to anxiety because it's too hard for us to keep that pace up over time. Our bodies aren't meant to run at 100 miles an hour all the time. We're meant to rest and that's part of what the recovery process is gonna give you. So another surprising sign of codependency are issues of addiction. Because when you grow up in a dysfunctional family and you learn codependent tendencies, you most likely didn't have your feelings or your experiences honored as a kid. In fact, you may have grown up doubting your own feelings and your own perceptions. Because often in dysfunctional families, kids get gaslit a lot, which means their reality gets denied. So for instance, maybe you were a kid like me that knew your dad drank too much, but nobody talked about it. So when you brought it up, you were told to be quiet. I know for me, I was the only one that really got that my family was dysfunctional, but nobody was talking about it. So I learned that my perceptions weren't necessarily accurate. And as a result, I started using food for comfort. So food is one of those substances that a child gets access to really early. And part of where this goes into codependency is when you stuff your feelings, when you don't have your experiences validated, when you learn to take care of other people and not yourself, you may not know as a child how to deal with your feelings. So sometimes using food for comfort can be a habit that becomes an addiction later. Other people who are codependent may start drinking in their teens, again, to hide the pain of what's happening in their childhood. So if there are issues of addiction, that might be a sign that you might be codependent as well. Now, the next thing I want you to go do is to go check out my journal prompts on self-care and setting boundaries, because that's gonna get you started in codependency recovery. Thanks so much.